Hey everyone, welcome to another video. This one's going to be all about how to climb with Zoe. So I put a poll out to you guys in the Discord community to ask, what champion do you guys want to see? And you guys came back with Zoe. So I'm really excited for this one. So over the last three or four days or something like that, I've spammed the hell out of Zoe in around Diamond Elo, finished on about a 65% win rate, really, really honed in on this specific playstyle with Zoe. And this video is going to be very much very similar to my Twisted Fate video, How to Climb to Challenge with Twisted Fate. It's going to be my interpretation and a very specific playstyle on Zoe that works for me. It may not work for all of you guys, but this is my interpretation, and this is the most successful way i found to actually climb with Zoe. So it's going to be very specific. And if we're going to do this sort of video, I think it's very important that I start with an analogy to, I guess, clarify the idea identity of Zoe or how I interpret the identity of Zoe. So, the way I want to do this is, let's start off with this sort of, I guess, mixed martial art analogy. So, for those of you, you know, who watch UFC or follow mixed martial arts, this will make a lot more sense, but I'm going to try and keep it very, very simple. So, let's just say there's two fighters. There's one fighter who's just primarily a boxer. So they want to generally a boxer. They you know want to keep. They want to stand on their feet all the all the time. They want to keep them at a range, and they want to utilize their range and their striking. And then let's just say that person's versing a wrestler, a grappler. They want to get them on the ground, get them in close quarters, and pin them on the ground and submit them. So let's just say this sort of fight. I want you to picture Zoe as the boxer. And the reason I've really found this analogy helpful is because, and as you'll see within this video, is that every single decision in the game, it's very easy to tie back to this analogy. So for example, if you think about a boxer, they want to be constantly keeping their enemy at a range. And I've actually been talking to a lot of pro players about Zoe, and they all say Zoe is about perceived threat and that's the exact same in boxing where a grappler just can't run in into Zoe because they're scared of just getting hit in the face in the meantime so there there's a lot of perceived threat with boxers because you know they have such threatening hands if you get anywhere near like Conor McGregor his left hand you get anywhere near bang you're gonna get knocked out it's very similar to Zoe so Zoe has a lot of this perceived threat but in order to utilize and bring about this uh, this perceived threat you need to control vision so I, I think of vision as your footwork how do you position the opponent into a position where, you know, they have to run into your shots or, you know, you can set up shots or combos to be able to take your opponent down. And obviously a more precise and disciplined boxer is going to be a lot more effective. And they also require foresight and all these qualities and traits extend from the boxing world into playing Zoe. And again, it might sound a little weird, but it'll make a lot more sense as we dive straight in. So the way we're going to do this video, guys, is we're going to go through three specific VODs. First, and, and I guess these three VODs I find actually encapsulate what it means to kind of play this style. So diving straight into this first VOD, guys, this is going to be uh, Zoe versus a melee matchup. So this is very, I guess, indicative of how Zoe would verse a lot of the melee matchups, would get a lot of early pressure and be very focused on poking the enemy down. In a lot of Zoe versus or X melee matchup, you're going to be able to actually get a lot of kill threat level 2, level 3. And I'll, let's, I'll kind of explain that as we go on. So generally as Zoe, what you want to be doing in a lot of these matchups is finding ways to get poke with your Q. And so one of the biggest, I guess, micro things that you need to understand when playing Zoe and what I've found to, that I guess I've had to try and refine over time, is the balance of being able to weave your Q around minions like this. I'll be doing a lot of these style Qs, but then also simultaneously trying to control my character to tether this guy so he can't get poke off. So that's a skill that will take, uh, like, I guess a lot of time. But generally, as a principle in the early game, you want to be making sure you're utilizing your range, just like a boxer would versus a grappler, utilizing your range um, and getting that, that poke off. Okay? So generally, what you're going to find yourself doing as well is like you're versing, like playing any other range versus melee matchups is trying to build a wave. Because once you build a wave, you're most likely going to get level 2 first, or you are going to get level 2 first. And this is going to allow you to generate... A, a lot of threat and then also get much more poke off and then also when this wave crashes you're going to be able to make a decision you're going to be able to roam into river roam into jungle get division or you're going to be able to poke this guy under tower so this is i guess pretty self-explanatory gameplay so far but again here my main objective is to get as much poke off here but but trying not to miss too much cs the reason i go w second it's a bit of a gamble, but if you do get a balloon on the first wave or after you get your W, after you get your W, it can actually, um, depending on what it is, it can actually lead to insane kill threat. 
you know, if you don't get a bubble, it's the end of the world. If you don't get a balloon, sorry, it's not the end of the world. But I just find it's worth getting W level two just in case because you can actually win the lane solely off this balloon if it's a good, if it's actually a good summoner or a good active. So what happens here? I get smite, and what you're gonna see, guys, and this is like a big, a big actually something I really, really want you guys to um to understand is that Zoe has extreme kill threat level two, level three, and especially level three when you get your bubble. One of the biggest mistakes I see Zoe players do is that they play way too scared. They play way too defensive in the early game, and they don't actually understand the kill threat that Zoe has. She has insane kill threat, especially with Ignite because of that movement speed. And look what I do here. I just walk past the minion wave and run at him, put my W, Ignite, just auto attack, and he's just dead. There's nothing he can do. And it's the exact same. A lot of these like players that you're versed when you, when you do this sort of... When you, I guess... When you play Zoe this way, they're not gonna they're not going to respect their all-in kill threat at level two, level three. And just going back a little bit here, guys. Generally, I find the early laning phase panning out two ways. This guy or the person you're versing is either gonna try and push into you, in which that's also fine if you're versing someone with a lot of wave clear. But what I find if that happens is that okay, I'll I'll be like, okay, I'll accept reality. You're pushing me in, but at level three or level two, if I get a good a good um, balloon. I'm just going to walk through the minion wave and actually chase you down the lane with my ignite and actually pot potentially kill you. Or even the wave might even be here and it'll give me a lot more room. But if this person respects like they should, because Zoe's such a strong level two, level three champion, and I get they let me push them in, I'm either going to be able to poke them under tower and harass them hardcore, or be able to like walk into a river, do, do a multitude of things. And actually, there's a high elo Korean Zoe player who actually just roams straight up like level three and can set up, and actually looks for dives at level three. So anyway, fast forwarding, I get this kill onto this Malphite. So, a lot of people, I mean, one thing you need to understand when playing Zoe is that her river skirmishes are actually nuts. And a lot of my games, the way I kind of see them play out is the jungler, like, I get to a river skirmish first and everyone's blowing summoners, which just makes Zoe stronger because you just pick up the summoners anyway. So, the reason I do, don't actually just base here, I already find that I have another another corrupting pot, and I actually always try to, at the moment, realize that taking Dematerializer is a lot stronger. And the reason I love taking Dematerializer, it allows me to do so many things. It allows me to get really, really good tempo resets off on a cannon wave, where I can just demat the cannon and this reset, or it allows me to um, roam really effectively, which you're about to see in this game. And the reason I don't reset here is because I want to be on the map, ready to go as the Scuttle spawn. I can't even count how many games where I've killed the jungler when it's just been a jungle 1v1 in the river over a scuttle. So I try to stay in the lane majority of the time, at least, even if I get a kill, at least until we've secured one scuttle. Because if someone contests, I'm going to be there, and that's where that is my domain. Where people are blowing summoners, I'm gonna get there first, I'm gonna bubble, and we can just hundred to zero someone, or I can chase them down with my ignite, or if they flash away, I can pick up their flash and do the exact same thing. And then because of this. I decide, okay, well, I'm just going to stay for 1,300 gold. Since 1,300 gold is such a good base on Zoe, another option if you don't want to stay to 1,300 gold or you can't stay to 1,300 gold is just rush Sork Boots. Boots is a really, really good rush on Zoe as well. Now, in my mind as Zoe, this is extremely important to understand, guys. Already what I'm thinking is, okay, which side am I most likely going to roam to? So when I'm playing Zoe... I very much play it like Twisted Fate. I really try to think about what's the strong side of the map and what's the weak side. Already, I believe my top lane has already died to this GP or gotten ganked already. And my bot lane has actually killed them 2v2. I actually can't remember if it was a gank, but they, they, they killed them bot. So already I'm thinking in my mind, my bot lane's winning and my top lane's losing. I don't think this Volibear, even if I get a kill for this Volibear and kill this GP, I don't think it's going to change the matchup too drastically. So what this means for me in my mind is, okay, I'm already thinking, now I know which side most likely I'm going to be leaning and roaming to. So now look at this. I'll actually go back a little bit. The next wave is a cannon wave, and this is exactly what I've been waiting for. I can't even kill this guy. So again, it's really important you're clear on your identity as Zoe as well. I know what my, my purpose was way before this. I already knew I wasn't going to be going for kills. I already knew I've already got that kill. I just want to farm, lean onto my bot side because I know I'll top side and get to my 1300 gold. So now, in my mind, I demat. 
I fast forward a little bit, I get to the CS, and now I'm basing on 1300 gold. Ideally, it'd be 1375 for a pink ward, or if if I didn't have, if I had 1200, I'll just get sork, sork boots and a pink ward. But um, this game, I didn't, I unfortunately, didn't have that luxury. So coming out of base here, I've just got my lost chapter. So already, what I'm thinking is, okay, well, what do I, what information do I see? I pan my camera, I see Volibear still losing trades and you know losing top pretty hard. Um, my bot lane's coming out of base now, so I'm going to be expecting them soon to push and start trading eventually bot. I think I actually see their bot lane recall, so it won't be for a while. And right now, I have a little bit of tempo onto this Malphite as well. So what I what I do right now is what I'm thinking is okay. I'm going to put a little bit of vision on bot side just to potentially um, allow myself to. I guess spot out any vision that they have, but then also spot out Olaf if he shows bot side, in which I can capitalize on a counter gank. I don't really want to be counter ganking top side. I want to be spending most of my ganks on bot side, remember, because if I counter gank top, I mean, it, yes, it will work, but I just feel like snowballing bot is a lot more reliable. And this is what I found in my games anyway, playing to the strong side. So another reason why I'm, I want to use my wards right now is that if I walked up and tried to hit the tower, obviously I'm going to be completely threatened having no vision myself. But then also, guys, another tip is you never want to be sitting on two trinker wards. You always want to be having one on the map, one on map. So the reason being is that having two is extremely inefficient, but... Just because you have two doesn't mean you should use two. You should only use one at a time. So use one ward, wait till that expires, then use the second ward. The reason being is if you were to use two wards, if I were to walk into River now and use two wards, what's going to happen? When they both die, If I use, even if I use one here and one over here, when they both die, there's going to be a period in time, once they die, that I'm going to have no wards. I'm going to have no vision. So I found that spreading out your wards, if you use one at a time, it's going to keep you safer for a longer period of time. And it's just a lot, if you use your wards well, you don't need to use two at the same time. It's just spreading them out is going to keep you safer for a longer period of time and have more vision on the map for, for an extended period of time. So now, I have lean, lean into Botside to put my vision, but what do I see? I see Olaf on Dragon. This is exactly what I already am thinking, because I've thought about my identity as a champion. These river skirmishes are really, really good. I know Olaf doesn't really threaten me that much. So I use my flash, my Q flash to try and get him. I'm bad and I miss my E. He should 100% have died there. But unfortunately, he gets the dragon and gets out. Which is pretty bad for me, but it is what it is. This is also the benefit of walking into river all the time. You're just going to create opportunities for yourself like this. So now, what am I thinking? I have a few options. And this is the style I opt into when playing Zoe. You'll see Zoe players do one or two things. And the different styles of playing Zoe. I can play for the lane and I can play for 1v1, which means how would I play my lane? It means I would be walking up aggressively, building waves and looking to poke this guy under tower with Qs and potential E's or whatever. Or you'll do what I do, which is a different style, Zoe, is knowing that my bot lane's winning, I'm going to be using all my Qs and a lot of my, my abilities on the wave. So extending my Q, trying to get the CS in. So I can exp expand my pressure to the rest of the map here. So again, I'm not bothering queuing him. I'm, I'm focusing all my attention onto the wave. Now, this is a very important distinction because there are differing ways to play Zoe. And for me, the way I like to think about this is, what is best for winning the game? Yes, I can focus a lot of my attention on, you know, looking for a kill onto this guy. But what is going to impact the game the most? And in my experience... Whenever I've roamed and looked for kill threat, like if I see kill threat on a side lane, I just find that snowballing bot just ends up winning me the game more. And yes, if I have the luxury to get the shove on mid, I will take that and roam. Also, guys, something to wear to be wary about. You're not always going to have kill threat on a side lane. If my bot lane was losing and my top lane was losing, maybe I would then focus my attention on mid to get myself far enough ahead that when I do roam, there is kill threat. But for now, I know my bot lane's already kind of winning. I've already got a lead myself. I'm one and zero. So I want to translate that. So I built a wave and I looked to roam bot. And like I said, they've been taking good trades because I saw them. Um, I already knew that they got kills before. What do I do? I pop the Scribes Bloom, get another Deep Ward here, just so I can spot out the, just in case the Olaf comes. And then I line up a little beautiful Q, bang, snipe him, and then we're able to get another kill onto the center on the back end. None of this would have happened. Maybe they would have done well 2v2, but again, GP probably would have 
stopped this Lucian Nami being able to kill in 2v2. Maybe I could have killed this Malphite 1v1. But again, we're getting plates. We're killing the bot lane. This is going to be how... And, and now, especially if you go and they blow flashes, it's going to make them vulnerable again at the same time. So right now, my intention is... Um, hopefully to get back to mid lane, potentially reset for my sword boots, and then rinse repeat to the exact same thing again. But now what happens is that Gragas decides to go for the blue, and I get a little bit bloodthirsty. I see this guy, I know that he doesn't have flash. I have a flash on myself, and I try to blow his ultimate, and then I see this. What do I see? I see him here, not my HP, I see I have Ignite, I see this, this smite on the ground, and I know I have this flash as my W. So, I go for this kill, which is not good, because... Even if we get this kill, it doesn't lead to anything. And I've spoken about this in a lot of my videos where sometimes leading, like getting a kill is good, but getting a kill in isolation a lot of the time, and especially if you're blowing summoners for it and potentially trading your life for it, is not good. Because even if I get this kill, what's going to happen? I'm still going to have to go back mid, re shove the wave, and reset myself. There's no objective we're going to get after it. We've already made our play bot. Our bot lane's in base. There's no dragon. There's nothing else for us to take. Yes, this would be completely different if a Baron was up or an Infernal Dragon was up and we can just go get Dragons straight after, but, but there's nothing to get. And the analogy I try to tie this back to in terms of the boxing analogy, guys, is... Think about a boxer in terms of overreaching. A good boxer is, again, they're precise, they're calculated, and they play... They, they have the, the game or the fight at their own pace. Right now, what I've done is I've overreached. I've... I've went for this massive punch, I've gone for my all-in, and now I've made myself vulnerable. I've overreached. This is why you see in UFC and all these, these boxing and stuff, they don't just go swinging punches like this, you know? They don't just go swinging punches all the time, because if you do that, then your defense is down, and then you're just going to make yourself vulnerable. So, the same with Zoe. I have my ultimate, which makes me go forward, I'm using my flash offensively, I'm using all these abilities offensively here, and making myself very vulnerable. If I do these sorts of plays, guys, I need to be, I need to know in my head that I'm going to be able to get this and get out. I know, I have to know that this is going to land. So, it's very important you understand that when you play Zoe, because otherwise these sorts of thing happen. I get this kill, or I don't, I actually don't even get the kill, and I just die for no reason here, give a shut down, and it's just bad gameplay. So what do I do? I get my Sorks. I'm already, again, constantly assessing the map, but I know that I'm going to go bot lane again. Again, unfortunately, I didn't have enough gold for my pink ward in base, and I really wanted to up the tempo of the game, so I didn't wait in base, even though maybe in hindsight I should have. But again, you know, it's hard to say in hindsight. Or oh, it's easy to say in hindsight, sorry. So now what do I do? Same thing, guys. Rinse and repeat. I really want to shut down this bot lane continually, roam onto the side that I've already got ahead. So I get the wave in, and what do I do? Instead of spending time poking this Malphite under tower, which I see so many when I coach, I see so many players do this, they just spend their time, all they do is focus on the 1v1, and they complain why they don't climb, or they, they, they're bot lane losing, or something like that. It's because you're not exerting your pressure around the map, guys. So now what do I do? I shove him in, I'm looking at the wave, and look at that. I panned my camera, guys. I panned my camera on the wave to see if it was a cannon wave. Look at that, I pan my camera, see it's a cannon wave, I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I'm gonna have a little bit more time, because in terms of time, guys, look at this. The bigger this wave is, the more time I'm gonna have to roam. So if this wave is only three creeps, I'm gonna have like not much time. And also in terms of time, guys, you gotta be looking at the creeps on the minimap. They're only coming out of base now. So in, in my head, I know I have quite a bit of time because the wave's not anywhere near and it's a cannon wave. So in my mind, that's, I'm using that as like a, a timer. I'm putting a timer on myself here. If the wave was already crashed and it wasn't, you know, maybe the wave was crashed like five seconds ago and it wasn't a cannon wave, I'm going to have way less time. What do I do? I just soft lean here. And a lot of the time, guys, you're not going to be able to get a kill like this. I roam and I don't do anything. But what it's doing is relieving pressure for the 2v2 and allowing my bot lane to take aggressive trades where they can't, the enemy can't trade back. So yes, I don't get anything here. I ping where they've warded most likely. And it is what it is. I don't really lose out on much because, you know, I could have got a bit of poke off at a Malphite, but I use my Scryer's Bloom here for bot lane as well to make sure they can sweep and see where the wards are. But I'm setting myself up and I'm constantly just exerting this pressure. This is how, this again, this is my interpretation of how I like to climb playing Zoe. And again, tying it back, got my dematerialize again, dematerializing the cannon and looking to rinse repeat here. 
Then Malphite ends up going top here, and I ping him out. I really don't want to follow topside, especially since I know Olaf topside since he just got Rift Herald as well. I really want to continue to stay on my bot side of the lane. So I'm trying to get this wave in as fast as possible so I can deny CS to this Malphite. But then, I pan my camera, I'm like, oh, maybe I should go and help them. So I end up walking my way up here, hoping that Olaf was going to chase. I'm assuming something was warded here. I get the bubble here, but it, it hits, but his um, ultimate was still up. So... That was, again, one of those very close, iffy, iffy things. I, I wouldn't usually make that sort of play, but it was just my instinct in the moment. I thought that I could potentially get a kill on the back end. So now, I know Malphite has no ultimate, and it's very important as Zoe to, when you're versing anyone with any sort of gap close or any sort of immediate threat to kill you, anything that prevents me from keeping my range, remember, tying it back to that analogy as a boxer, I want to keep them at my range. I don't want to get... I don't want to allow them to get me onto the ground and close that, that distance onto me. Anything like that, I need to be keeping extreme attention on. And knowing that Malphite doesn't have ult now, in my mind, it's like, okay, it's going to be a lot easier for me to keep my range. So that's just something in terms of threat assessment I'm constantly doing and tying it back to the identity of how can I keep myself safe, all right? I know that Olaf has, you know, dick all threat on me. Malphite now has dick all threat on me. You know, Senna, Ezreal can't really jump onto me. Um, so it's looking pretty good right now. So now what do I do? I get the wave in, trying to get the wave in. And what do I do? I see the plate here. I see the plate so low. So I'm like, you know what? Let's just stick, stay for the plate. And then I look at bot, and I actually don't think there was much kill threat. I looked at it, I didn't think there was much kill threat. And then also, I knew that there was not many creeps, and the, the, the wave was kind of coming, and I didn't feel comfortable um, going bot when I didn't think it was going to be a kill threat. And also... In my mind, I was also thinking, well, Olaf most likely, he'd just been topside, just got Rift Held. He's most likely going to pass straight out of base onto bot side. So already, in my mind, I'm thinking, uh, I kind of I kind of don't feel good about that. The other thing that I want to talk about is tower. So mid tower is absolutely, like, game changing. If you can somehow break this tower, it's like Twisted Fate, when you're playing Twisted Fate. If you can break the enemy mid tower, it allows you to do so much more. It's like, it's like breaking the chains off your champion, because... It means that you're going to be able to shove in. They're going to be a lot more scared, so they're going to have to catch waves all the way at tier 2. And it's going to give you way much more t more space to roam. And then also, there's going to be way more opportunities to throw bubbles and create way more, I guess... They're going to have to go over so much more terrain. You're going to be able to control so much more terrain. And it's going to allow you to land more bubbles, more poke, more kills, etc, etc. So, as Zoe... If you do find yourself hitting mid tower, it's not the end of the world because it's not just for gold. It's good for your champion's identity as well, which is another interesting thing to talk about or have a think about. So deciding not to roam, I decided to just get some chip down, constantly panning my camera bot to keep the, the situation updated in my mind. And I duck out of vision, constantly looking to keep this wave shoved in. Again, dematerializing de the cannon. And now this is, again, going to... Keep the pressure on, keep the pressure on. I'm pumping up the gas, I'm pumping, I'm putting my pedal to the metal, keeping the game pace at my pace. And talking to a lot of pro player, like this pro player I spoke to about Zoe, he said one of the things about Zoe is that you need to play the game at your pace. Zoe has to set the pace of the game. And if you're not, if the game isn't played at your pace, and you're playing in terms of, the, I guess, in the frame of the enemy mid laner, it's very hard to navigate. So as Zoe, I'm constantly thinking, all right, well, I'm, I'm setting the pace, guys, man. Like, I'm, I'm, I want to play this game fast. And dematerial, Dematerializer allows me to do this. And again, remembering, this is just my style of playing Zoe. I love this style. I, I think it's so effective. I'm climbing a shit ton with it. It works for me. You know, this fast-oriented, fast-paced style may not work for you. Maybe you don't have the level of side lane awareness that you need to have it. Maybe you're not comfortable playing with this fast-paced Zoe. But again, this is just my interpretation. I remember looking here, and I got the wave, and I'm like, well, I know most likely Olaf's going to be here. So I was very scared of kind of going for this play. I was a little bit scared here. That's why I didn't That's why I didn't just walk around here, and that's why I kind of walked over here, and look, I was going to look for an E that way. That's why I was a little bit scared here. I should have probably used pings to communicate, like danger pings, a little bit better here. But as Zoe, another thing I'll quickly talk about is in terms of terrain and bubbles. You get a lot of Zoe guides saying, oh, if you stand in this corner, it's going to give you the, this awesome bubble. Yes, I could sit here spending hours talking about angles. But what I recommend, and, and why I, I want to be more of a teacher rather than showing, is that if you kind of understand what you're trying to achieve on Zoe, and spend a lot of time, I guess, understanding what is, the, what is this ability, this bubble? What is the strength of this ability? 
you're going to spend time going into a game and spending your like look like having your e not on smartcast and seeing the lines for yourself it's very intuitive i don't feel like as a as, as someone watching a you know watching my content it's not going to be helpful me explaining you're not going to it's not like a math test you're not going to remember all this shit like you have to be able to do this in the game yourself i'm not behind your i'm not behind your shoulders being able to tell you what to do okay so I say experiment with it. Put the E on like not smart cast, see the line and have a go. I never looked at a single guy when I played Zoe. I just did it all intuitively. Yes, I watched a lot of pro players just because I was a pro coach and who I had a lot of Zoe mains that I coached. But again, my E, all these E locations, it's very intuitive, guys. It's just all about terrain. It's all about awareness and, and game sense. So I lean here anyway, trying to get an E. I get a bubble onto Ezreal, but I know that we can't really follow up here. Now that my Gragas is kind of in the area, I feel a little bit safer, and especially since Malphite's showing on mid wave. But then I, I end up actually opting not to do it. Oh, this is what I was doing in the game. I remember now. So when I saw Malphite mid here, and I was thinking, oh, Malphite doesn't have ult. I'm pretty sure in my mind I was thinking, oh, ult, Malphite doesn't have ult. And this is the strength of having the river cleared or pinked ideally. They're not going to know what you're doing. They don't know whether you're diving bot or, you know, whatever. So a lot of the time you'll find this ward here and having a pink in river is going to force them to either walk over here and take a chunk with your E or they're going to walk through here and just get completely chunked as well. And I know he didn't have R, so I know he couldn't escape me. So that's also something to think about, guys, when you play Zoe. Don't just completely tunnel on... Um, you know, roaming and trying to kill the bot lane. You can actually bait them into river and chase them down and actually poke them when they walk through here. And I do that actually all the time. And I remember doing it here as well. I know he can't. He came in. I actually pinged him. I just ignited him for the movement speed. I know he can't get away. I know he doesn't have ultimate. I missed my bubble because I'm an idiot. And we get the kill. So, looking good so far, guys. Looking very good. Um, get the wave in again. We get dragon. Nice. Just a little thing, actually, again, playing around objectives here. Um, I really wanted to base and value my tempo, and I knew that they didn't really need me, so I just base instead of just helping them. That's just a little a selfish thing you can do as a mid laner, is just value your tempo really highly. Now, working towards my Ludens, going back to mid lane. The Olaf uses Rift Tower, but, you know, we swart his plan. Is that a word, swart? Right. And again, nothing's changed with my plan, guys. I'm constantly looking to roam bot, but I don't want to roam bot when there's no wave. Then, Malphite actually goes bot before me. He's a clever little bugger. He actually gets there before me, unfortunately. So, props to Malphite. So, what do I do? What is my response? Instead of going top, I mean, they're already going top. What do I do? I'm thinking, okay. Well, given my identity of a champion, I see Malphite. I mean, I see GP. He doesn't really need... They don't need my help. It's better for me to just hit mid-tower, because if I can break this mid-tower... Again, it's going to be very beneficial for my champion. So, instead of helping the map, you know, this seems a little greedy. But again, I don't want to help this volley bit. He's a piece of shit anyway, right? So, I'm going to have one strong side, one weak side. I want to either break this mid tower to help myself roam and influence the map more. Or, I want to just stick to my, to my, uh, my helping out my bot lane. And there's no reason for me to roam bot now because my bot lane's not even base. I don't even know where they are. It's better for me to get a bit of chip off onto this mid tower. So I've got three plates by myself, which is looking good. And especially if we somehow got rift tower, this tower would be able to get rifted from two plates and actually go boom. So now, constantly leaning out of vision, guys. This is something you need to you need to do. I see a lot of mid laners. They just hover here. They just stand in the middle lane. Hey guys, I'm I'm in mid lane. I'm not roaming. Don't need to your side lanes. Don't need to be scared, guys. I'm wa wave at them from the other side of the map. Just just chill in the pinks here, guys. This is, especially when this is pinked and this dot brush is pinked, just chill. This is exert, this is what I call like, this is like fake pressure. Soft leaning. They don't know shit. They don't know I'm leaning all the way down. They don't know if I'm sitting in the bush. They don't know anything. This is generating threat. This is going to, in some ways, potentially help my bot lane take aggressive trades. Or it's going to, if I had a ward here, I could, you know, force them to walk in into river to try and find me. And then I E and then I Q and then, you know, voila, more, more poke, more damage. So this is my chaotic Zoe. This is what I love to do. I love to just constantly make it make the bot lane or a specific side lane a living hell to verse me. And this is, um, yeah, this is kind of the I guess the premise of this video. I really want to show how to implement this strategy. And I'm gonna. This is not just the only one, guys. I'll try and speed up this vod a little bit though, so we can get onto other ones. But I want to show you how we break this game open. So now again, use the Scry's Bloom, trying to clear vision as much as I can. I put some vision down. And actually here, I remember, 
Olaf was just topside. If we go back here a little bit, Olaf was just topside. And whenever I see the jungle just go topside and then recall, in my mind, my default response is, okay, Olaf is most likely going to be bot side now. If he finished top side and is recalled, it's it, like most of the time they're just going to go back and then they're going to go back. He's going to go back to his bot side. So again, here I was actually quite scared of Olaf. This is why I don't, I didn't automatically commit. I wanted to clear this vision and wait a little bit because I didn't know what was going on. I knew most likely Olaf was going to be here and look where he is. He's here and they kind of dive, dive without me. So now I'm in a sticky situation, but again, I'm Zoe, and I'm playing with my team here, playing in the jungle, and this is what I don't want. I don't want to be collapsed on. I don't want to be melee range. I don't, I want to be keeping them out of tether. So this is not what you want to be doing on Zoe, or not getting yourself in these sorts of situations. So I'm actually forced to flash, and I'm trying to regroup, get into a position where I can utilize my range. So, you know, Zoe is a very, it's like a Muhammad Ali man, he's quick. You know, was a float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. You you got to be quick and agile. He's a very quick and agile champion. He's not like a slow heavyweight boxer. He's like a he's like a light or a featherweight or a lightweight or something like that, welterweight. So um, so again, in these skirmishes, you, that's in my attention constantly is I don't want to be stuck in those situations. That's why I instantly flash, knowing that that's not going to be a good a favorable situation for me. And now look at this, we're able to kind of break mid tower. And in my mind, this is beautiful. And I've set this up before by, by already getting chips off on the tower. But now in my mind is like okay. Beautiful. I can then roam bot even more so. So I, I recall, I get this next wave, recall for my Ludens. And I found with builds, guys, I found that going Rabadon second is just the best. It's either, I found that going Morellos is actually shitty. I actually take back what I said in my last Zoe video, playing a lot more Zoe now, is that raw AP is just the best. Like, the, I remember before I was saying how Zoe, I, I felt like Morellos was good because it gave you tankiness. But I feel like you're so squishy anyway, and if you're ever in a position to die, you're going to die regardless. Like, you, it's not like that bit of HP is going to help. So I find that just either going Ludens into Rabadons, or like Ludens into Zonias, or Ludens into Banshees is the best. I, I just hate Morellos at the moment. I think it's such a weak item. So now Malphite goes top. So what does that mean for me? Push? Oh, actually, I, actually, look at this. Instead of going straight mid, I see Malphite ult top. So I know that... I don't need to attend mid straight away. I know Malphite's going to take a while to go mid. So I can just go straight bot knowing that the wave is already cra crashing. And this is my opportunity to get to get a little dive off. So what do I do? I make a, a, a beeline straight for bot lane. And um, get this nice little bubble onto this guy. Force his little stopwatch. Regroup them, force them under tower and just pump and dump them here. So again... There's nothing special going on here. It, all it is is just side lane awareness, understanding the identi identity of my champion and the way I want to play this game. This is the strength of Zoe. You can you can make these things happen. And even if you're you're you can't push them in mid, you can make it happen. And this is what I'm going to show you in the next vod. Actually, is when you're you're actually in a losing one v one mid. But how can you also continue to make the same thing happen? So I stick around now for Dragon. And what I want to do is actually highlight. This is an extremely crucial part of the game. Whenever you are around dragons, you always want to be thinking, okay, if they walk in, I want to be standing here and looking to bubble so they can't get in here. Or if they're coming in from this way, looking over bubbles and controlling these choke points. This is why deep vision over here on drawing on the minimap is really useful so you can prepare your Qs and your Es. Playing around any objective like dragons or rift heralds or barons or towers, that is your domain. And I already, I already recognize this from, from day dot or like standing, I mean already loading into the game or um, I know as my identity as a champion, I'm very good at playing out of vision, utilizing my threat and utilizing my range and controlling these choke points. So already around obje ob objectives, that's all I'm thinking. How can I not let them in? And a lot of the time, teams aren't going to want to face check a Zoe, you know, they're just going to give up the ob objectives. So, now, I'm going to give you a perfect example of a bad play on Zoe and why it's bad, so you can not make these sorts of mistakes on yourself. So, instead of resetting, guys, I get mid-wave. I should have just reset for my next nearly to large rod, but I see this GP, and this is what I call just an auto... I don't know if this is autopilot or just a bad decision. Why is this a bad play? Well, tie it back to the boxing analogy, guys. I don't have anyone here to back me up, but more importantly, I have to blow everything to kill this guy. Which, what does that mean for me? It means I'm going to overreach and it means I'm going to be vulnerable. And if I don't kill this guy and get out, I'm going to die. 
I'm going to make myself vulnerable, and I'm probably going to die on the back end. And what do I do? It's very hard for me to kill this GP. How can I expect myself to do this, to make this sort of play? And this is actually another mistake, what I see is always do all the time. And I actually make it here as well. Why would I just queue like this? I think queuing like this is really bad. I think a lot of the time it's better to approach these skirmishes, close the gap first, make the angle a lot smaller, then queue, because it's a lot easier to hit it. When you're going from this long range, like a huge NFL, you know, a huge throw or whatever, from like a you know, receiver or whatever, I'll stop talking about sports, but like super fly, it's so unreliable. So a big mistake I see Zoe's do, especially all later, is exactly this. These long range, stupid queues, thinking, oh, you know, I'm like fake, oh, I can hit these cues, and then, you know, I miss my cue, all I have is an E, and it's bad. I should have just walked up and closed the gap. So, again, right now, what happens? I'm overextended, right? I overreach, exactly like the boxing, and now I die for it, and, I, and it's just useless. Even if I were to get that kill, guys, what does it do? It doesn't do shit. I already have to reset anyway. My Gragas is on bot side, my Nami's recalling, my Volibear's all the way on bot side. There's no objective, there's top tower, I guess, but we can get that anyway. Right, so learn from my mistakes. Don't be, don't be an idiot like me. So now coming back on the map, one thing that you need to think about again is okay. Zoe is not good in the side lane. Right, very. Th this is a huge weakness of Zoe. Side laning on Zoe. So generally, I find myself in my games. I'm either doing one or two things. I'm either grouping. I'm either catching a wave deep in the side lane if the game's more even, and just grouping mid to get poke with the team, and then again moving up, getting vision, or just straight up. Poking under that tier 1 tower to break that tower first, and then looking to go to the side lane. But, if my jungler's nice enough, and my, my AD carry and my support are actually far enough ahead that we have control, and my jungler's hovering me topside, I feel safe to get top tower. This isn't always going to be the case. Maybe your jungler, if your jungler's not, you know, doesn't have a brain, he's not hovering the top laner, it's going to be a lot harder to do this. But remember, it's not the end of the world. You can always adapt. And adaption, that's the name of the game in League of Legends, guys. It's all about adaption. So again, my Gragas, if my Gragas wasn't here, I would either be recalling, getting a jungle camp, or just grouping mid would help, my, help get some poke off, get that vision down, and then look to break the side lane tower. It is what it is. I recall, get another pink ward, and come to group mid. Now... This is Zoe's domain. I mean, all other domains. She's got multiple domains. But this is one of her uh, uh, main things. Now, look at this. What do we see? 5v5. Five, five. five people here. Five people here. Everyone's grouping around Bot River for some reason. Maybe because the dragon's coming up soonish. I'm not quite sure. But why is this good for Zoe? Well, I've identified that the only person that can get onto me is Malphite. And if I keep that in my mind, like I have at the start of the game, I've identified the key threats. If you loop back to my previous video, it's all about identifying the key threats. This is what it's about, guys. It's about poking from a distance and utilizing your range, just like a boxer, right? Say I'm, vers I'm versing these Olaf and this GP and stuff. They are, they are grapplers. They're wrestlers. They want to, they want to close the gap, but they can't do that. I'm gonna, I'm Conor McGregor. I'm holding them at a distance. You, they can't get anywhere near me. And this is where I can just poke them down, whittle them down, slow punches over time. You know. And this is exactly what I want. If you want to contest vision like this, man, I'm happy to do this. I can just poke you with bubbles, poke you with cues, and um, slowly whittle you down. All right? This is exactly what I want to do with Zoe. And this is, if any of these 5v5, and this is why maybe Zoe is actually quite good in gold. Because it's like the ARAM, you know, the gold ARAM, everyone 5v5s. Maybe Zoe is quite good. I've, I haven't played Zoe in gold. I've only played it in high yellow. But maybe this is quite good if this happens all the time. So, um, this is something to just be conscious about. All right? Maybe if I'm another champion, if I'm a Twisted Fate or a Fizz or something, I'd be in the side lane, remember? I would not be doing this type of thing. Every action has to be coherent with the identity of your champion, remember guys? Every action has to make sense. So they end up giving up the vision eventually, um, and we end up controlling vision slowly. And I love this shit, man. Like, if you want to get anywhere near me, I land a bubble. They have to like, oh, look, protect, protect. And I just get more poke off, and then we get a nice little engage based off my poke. And we just rinse them through right here. And, um... This is one of the major reasons we break open the game. Here, I actually mess up mechanically. I could have killed this Olaf. If I, I Q, R, and then W with my flash, he dies here. But then I just, I, um, I don't even know what I, I don't even know what I do, honestly. <laughs> I can't even tell you what I did. So now, fast forwarding a little bit, I get another snipe off on Israel. I just want to show off a little bit. I know I don't show off. I show, bam. All right. Next. Resetting, playing around objectives. All right. This was a little bit funky for me because... Look at my mana. I only have... I don't really have much mana. I knew this was a bit sketchy. I knew they were going to come in from this checkpoint. Look at how I'm positioning. I'm ready to get the E on, but 
Olaf has R. He can just walk through. I can't really choke him, uh, chunk him enough. And we don't have enough deep vision here to actually set up proper poke, which is annoying. Ideally, I would be sitting here knowing I have vision up here and setting up E's way so they can't even get anywhere near there. But this fight was bad for me. But the reason I didn't call it off is because I knew we were so far ahead anyway. Um, it is what it is. So I try to block the rest of the team off with my bubble, but um, Malphite just flashes right through in... Um, I blocked the center off with that with that E, but it is what it is. So we end up winning this fight anyway. Now, I want to show you how this game ends up coming to an end. We end up now controlling Baron around Vision and a uh, Vision around Baron. Now, this is this is the best. This is my favorite bit about playing Zoe is controlling this Vision around Baron. All right? Um, you control this Vision, and when they come anywhere near, this is where you set up bubbles. We set up picks. This is where Zoe can just, like, really make the difference in these sloppy games. So what do I do? Got to wait for my team a little bit here, and because uh, I'm a, I, I've really tested my ease, I know that if the wave pushes out here, I know they're going to look to walk through there, so I can set up potential bubbles here, and so I get my nice little E off, knowing he's going to walk through Raptors, get a beautiful chunk here, we end up nearly, we one shot the Olaf, and then we end up um, killing the Ezreal, I believe, as well, and then we end up getting the Baron as well, and we end, end up ending the game off this. So, what we're going to do, I'm going to go through another VOD here, I'll try and keep it quick, is a game versus Nivea, where I actually die early. And I want to explain how I still pull off this, this strategy, and why um, the strategy I feel like is actually quite reliable, alright? So stay tuned, guys. So the reason I really want to show this VOD is actually, this is me getting behind. I actually get incredibly far behind in the early game here, against a pretty tough matchup if I get behind. It's not tough if, I, if, I'm, if I'm ahead, but if I'm behind, it's really hard. So what actually happens here, and when you're playing any of these matchups, when you're versing, like, say, a Victor, um, a Zareth, Velkoz, a Nivea, any of these very high wave clear champions, generally what you want to be doing level 1 is instead of weaving your Q around the minions, you want to be using your Q on the minion wave first to be able to build that first initial uh, minion advantage, and then... Um, and then once you've got the minion advantage, then you can start spending Qs on them. So it's very important that I get this initial, um, I guess, minion advantage. Then I can start spending my abilities on him. And as you'll see, I've used two Qs on the on the wave. And then I start to change my Qs onto him and start poking him. Now I'm versing a Lee Sin. And what, something that I didn't identify enough was the level 2 threat onto me. Um, I, I completely, f I didn't realize that Lee Sin would actually go for a, a level 2 gank this red to mid. And I, I don't flash it. I flash late. I actually ignite as well for the extra movement speed, thinking I could maybe survive, but I end up dying, and I use both my summoners. Now, this is, I don't have ignite either, so this is very, very bad for Zoe. So now I am, you know, 0-1, no summoners, um, Lee Sin's got the kill, we have a really bad comp topside, like triple AP topside, really not good. So, in my mind, and sorry, I, don't re I didn't record this with OBS, I actually, um, so I have to play it through the league replay this time. So... What do I see here? I know that I'm going to be, you know, in a pretty rough spot, but it's not over. I know, and my actually, my top lane has actually died as well, um, which is not good. But um, I know that's not over because I can still get my bot lane ahead. And if I can somehow get my bot lane ahead, we can, we can still win this game. So if I can somehow build a wave into this Anivia or get this wave advantage off this Anivia, on this Anivia, I can maybe do something. So what I do, I use the... I use the um, the fact that I'm actually got pushed in, so I know that I'm going to be able to build a wave here. So I stand up past the wave, knowing that um, he has to respect me, because I can still like look to potentially all hit him. But I'm, right now, I'm trying to protect the wave as much as I can, so I can potentially build a wave and look bot. So what do I do? I get I ward down just in case, so I can um, feel safe to push up. And I'm constantly standing outside the wave. And why am I standing outside the wave? Again, I don't want him to use abilities on the wave. So I'm trying to get him to queue me. So he's not going to queue the wave. But it is what it is. So then I'm fortunate enough to get a redemption. So I just redemption the wave so I can get this wave in. Because I actually, I panned my camera bot knowing that they've actually been trading quite well. So what do I do? I recognize that. I pick up this cleanse. And then I just walk bot side. I know that they've got, they can build waves. They're in a favorable matchup. I know Lee Sin. Um, most likely still going to be on top side, given it's 3 minutes 50. Because uh, he hasn't done the loop back for this scuttle, so I know he's most likely on top side. So, what do I do? I just roam bot. 
And I know, yes, I knew like the next wave was going to be a counter wave, but I knew it was worth me losing CS if I can somehow get this bot lane ahead. Because I know if this game plays out normally, I stay in this mid lane, I'm not going to be able to kill this Anivia. Anivia is going to TP back soon with a catalyst once she gets 1100 gold. Top lane's going to be continually losing like, like this. Is she dying again because it's Kale? And once Kale's behind, she's useless. My Evelyn's an Evelyn. She can't really do anything if she has losing lanes. So if I don't, and, and Caitlyn's not going to be able to operate if Anivia is really fed. So I know that I need to snowball bot. So what I do, I get a nice little bubble. I can't um, follow up on it because the minion wave was there. But I, I'm being quite desperate at the moment. But even if I come here, and even if I can blow summoners, even if I can blow any summoners, if I can make bot lane chaotic enough that I can come back again, this is going to create an opportunity. And here, Miss Q's... Um, my Senna actually dies here, unfortunately, um, but we don't actually get anything here. But what happens? I pretend to walk back mid. I know Eve's catching mid wave. They pretend, they obviously think that I've recalled or something. And then again, I come back. I miss my bubble, but I chase down this, this Sivir. Sivir ends up blowing her flash, which is really, really good. I get that kill. I could have easily got this kill as well, but I mechanically misplay. But what I've done so far is actually blown two summoners. I've blown, I burnt the TP on to this Anivia, and I burnt yeah summoners on Siva and this um, Ajana. So what this says to me is yes, it is chaotic, and I am behind. I've got enough gold to get my my um, lost chapter from that kill, luckily. But this is gonna this is sowing the seeds for something in the future. And what I see too many mid laners do is they, they die 1v1. They just view the game in a 1v1. They just give up. But I'm not giving up, man. I, I know that I'm Zoe. I can still make this game chaotic enough. Yes, it's gonna be it might be a bit sloppy, but I can get it done. And what happens? I go back mid and I want to do the exact same thing. Alright? I want to push in and I want to roam. So I'm pushing in this next wave as fast as I can, knowing that once Anivia can get six like this. And push me in. It's going to be very difficult for me to get roams off. So I do this. I get some vision down. I sit from the side. Top still dying. I'm trying to get this wave clear off. I'm assuming Anivia was leaning top side as well to potentially dive top or something, or maybe get get vision down top side or something. But again, I'm constantly looking to focus my abilities on the wave. Now that I've got my abilities on the wave, what do I do? I lean bot side, and I know before that I've already blown their summoners, and I know Anivia doesn't have teleport. And this is a very common situation where the jungler will just continue to focus one side. He'll continue to focus the side that he's killed and continue to make him further and further and further behind and invade, invade this Eve, whatever. I understand that. If Evelyn, was, if, if Lee was to come bot side and, and you know, what this is going to do if, if, if Lee was to come bot side is, well, okay, you're defending your bot lane, but now that's going to allow my... It's going to stop, I guess, snowballing my top side. It's going to allow Kale to just power farm. But then also, given that these sort of jungle fights here with my Evelyn are not too bad, it could be beneficial. But a majority of the time, um, if I can get Vision down and see Lee Sin on top side at all, I know I'm going to be going bot. So this game, I knew Lee Sin was just playing hard to top side. I'm going to play hard to bot side and continue to keep up this chaos. So what do I do? I demat that cannon wave. I'm constantly looking to get chunk to get poke off. And again, Anivia can't follow me. Anivia doesn't want, doesn't want to do this. And it's the exact same as Victor, any of these immobile mages. They don't want to follow into the jungle like this because they get caught out by Evelyn. They can get bubbled by me. It just makes things too chaotic for them. That's not what they want. Zoe doesn't mind this. I can do this. I can just sit here knowing that Lee Sin's not going to be. He's going to be on the top side and continue to make the game chaotic. I know that I've already blown summoners, but I've killed this Janna now. Help Caitlyn kill this Janna. This guy has no summoners. We kill this guy as well. So now, from the game that has been completely doomed early on, yes, I've lost a bunch of plates mid. Yes, Anivia is going to be quite fed, but I'm getting killed. I'm getting my gold from killing bot lane. And now, I have a side to 100% play through, and I have, there's a little bit of hope for me to win this game, knowing that, um, you know, my Caitlyn's going to be quite strong. So what do I do? Come back to lane, do the exact same thing. Focus all my abilities on the wave. I don't want to focus my abilities on the Anivia. I can't kill the Anivia. He's got Catalyst. He's too, too, too tanky, man. Like, I can't do that. And there's no point. Even if it's it's a lot... Then, if I... Me and this Anivia heavy trade mid as well, Lee Sin's just going to want to come mid and potentially take a 2v2. I don't want that. I want to stay healthy. I want to continually roam. Put my pink on bot side here. Continually hover. I can't hover all the time. I know if I, if I feel like there's no wave... Um, like here there was no wave, I knew I couldn't roam, so I just stay for one more wave. You still got to have, you can't mindlessly roam, you still got to be very calculated, alright? 
You st and the way, in terms of tying this back to the analogy, guys, I tie it back to in terms of, it's like, I'm conserving my energy mid, or I'm conserve. It's like in a fight, you conserve your energy for a little bit in certain rounds, so you can conserve it up a little, and then use your combo or use your strategy in one hit. I'm not using my mana and my health H HP mid. I'm conserving it so I can use it somewhere else, use it to undergo my strategy. Okay. Same thing against again, constantly leaning out a river like this. If I can't, and what this is also doing is giving it's given my jungler enough room to potentially make a play bot side as well, because he knows that. Um, we've gotten this them behind. It gives my my Evelyn a place to, to potentially kill. So anyway, fast warning a little bit. They've killed bot lane again, and thanks to my roaming, it's allowed my my Caitlyn to be quite far ahead. So I'm pretty happy with that. So there's no point in me doing anything else. So I just continue to stay to stay mid like this. Then I see a top dive happening. I end up playing for the counter gank here because it, it just looks so free. I wouldn't usually do this again, but it looked very very free. So I tried to defend this KO. I get my um. Get a kill on Lee Sin here. Ends up baiting the set, I believe, and we end up killing the set as well, which is a pretty good counter gank thing for, for Zoe as well. And I know this is all playing into my hand and not playing into Anivia's hand. Anivia just wants to sit mid. And Mobile Mages like that just want to sit mid. They don't want all this chaos. So now, what I want to use this VOD for actually quickly is to highlight some actual macro game stuff. So, an absolutely crucial thing, guys, when you're playing Zoe is that you need to be at the objective first. You need to be at the objective as it spawns or way earlier than it spawns, ideally, to set up vision and control these choke points so you can, um, you know, you can make picks with your E and get poke off with your Q. Unfortunately here, I reset quite late um, and I get chunked for it. I get punished for it and it's a lot harder for me to get chunk off. But still, I punish this Anivia. And these sorts of fights are a lot harder to navigate when playing Zoe because, look... I, I just want sl I want to play around my cooldowns. And when it's a very chaotic fight like this, just all inning and everyone's close range, this is not what I want. Remember the boxing analogy? This is like wrestling. This is grappling. This is jujitsu. You know, this is everyone on the ground. This is everyone getting messy. I don't want this. I want to be at range. I want to play the fights on my pace. This is not playing the fights at Zoe's pace, okay? So, I mean, I have to adapt. I have to keep my range. I have to play slow. There's no need to suicide. There's no need to, to compensate. Um, then again, the fight, I guess, kind of dims down. Then that's my opportunity to do something. You have to be very disciplined when you play Zoe because if you're not, you're going to get dragged into participating in fights that aren't coherent with your kit, which means you're going to be close range, you're going to be blowing summoners, you're going to be getting into this, these messy fights that aren't good for you. So what do I do here? I'm trying to stop them from getting onto the dragon. I position myself around the terrain to get a nice little E off onto this Anivia, and this allows us to... Um, Again, play these fights a little bit better. It's a little bit better for my pace. But that's more what I want them to do. I want them to come in from a specific choke point, allow me to get my poke off, allow, me to allow myself to get these bubbles off, which is, again can slow down the pace of these fights. So now what I want to do quickly is highlight a few things you can do. Um, instead of just going top, what you can actually do in terms of speeding up the process of killing this mid, this mid tower, because killing this mid tower is just really, really good for Zoe, is you can just sit around the side like this, and you can actually just set up poke, and set up 100 to zeros. Here I'm able to get a nice little bubble off onto Janna. They end up blocking it, but um, I still get some decent poke off. So that's like just a nice little, neat little trick you can do as well. Alright, so, let's fast forward a little bit. I want to quickly explain another thing in this game. So, I'm just in the side lane knowing that everyone's grouped, and then I come group, I come in from the side, trying to maintain my range like this. I'm able to get a nice little max range cue onto this Lee Sin. Foresight requires foresight. That, those sort of cues I wouldn't really recommend, but I knew that I was coming from out of vision, so... Um, okay, now this is what I was talking about. When you're sieging with these sorts of... Zoe is a sieger. Zoe's very good at sieging, so... A lot of other champions wouldn't do this. They like they have low range and they or they can't siege, they can't break mid tower, so they'll just go to the side, right? They go to the side to create man advantage. Whereas Zoe, on the other hand, can siege. She can utilize her range to poke from the side and do these sorts of things. So what do I do? I try to group mid. I see Anivia out of position. I, I just abuse her, impose my will on her. Now what do I do? Instead of just going back to the side, I stick around. And why do I want to stick around? It's because again, I want to break this mid tower. It's very good for Zoe. And I just come in with bubbles from the side and continually assassinate people. This is what you can do if you're creative. And this is what you do if you can, if you understand um, your identity as a champion. And again, rinse, repeat, same thing. Bang, bang, bang. Get a nice little E off again. <sighs> Curve my Q around like I'm a beast. And then get another kill. These sorts of kills are all happening because I, I know 
my champion operates out of vision like this. He operates abusing these tree points. He operates from long range. Being in the side lane and pushing the side lane is another option, guys. Remember, tying it back to my mid lane macro video, you have to bring about these actions down to what you're trying to achieve on that specific champion. So to round off this video, guys, I want to go over one little thing over this third VOD, just so I, because I think this is such an important point for you guys in order to actually close out games. Like, yes, with the two previous VODs, you know how to get leads, but this, I feel like, is a crucial bit of information for you guys to make sure you can end. So what actually happened, the exact same thing, I've consistently leaned bot, I've actually, let me change that, I've consistently leaned bot, broke this tower. What does that mean? The AD carry and support want to go mid. So generally what I want to do is I want to help them break this mid tower um, rather than just go to a side lane myself. So what do I do? I get my blue buff and instead of going to the side lane, I just come mid and I try and position around the side because what I want to do ideally is utilize my strength of poke and poking from out of vision. And a lot of the time what I found when playing Zoe, by just sitting here, constantly throwing E's, constantly throwing Q's, I can keep doing this until one of them land, and then when one of them lands, we just get the the tower for free. Or they're so scared, and we, we and this generates so much space that the AD carry just gets mid tower anyway. So generally, this is what I really like to do when playing Zoe to try and break open the game because once this tower is dead, right, it makes my job it makes me, my job so much easier because what happens? I reset. I now want to go topside, get this top tower, but it's so much harder to get this top tower if we haven't broken tier 1 mid, because if we break tier 1 mid, then the AD carry and support will be able to get so much more space and so much more control around mid, and their lean and their hover onto top side should make getting this top tower so much easier. So this is generally, this is the little tip guys I want to do, and let's just say hypothetically beforehand, I couldn't maybe the AD carry, my AD carry support, where we weren't strong enough to get this, this mid tower, then I would just go top side, um, and then control vision first, and then, uh, sorry, go mid, control vision first, then go top, shove it out, and try and create a man advantage, then come mid and do the exact same thing. I really want to be utilizing my strength of poking and sieging to be able to create an advantage that way, rather than like looking for a split push or something like that. Or wait for an objective to spawn, play around an objective, get a few picks, and then use those opportunities to potentially um, do something else. Also, guys, another thing that could potentially happen, I know this I'm going over a lot, but I think this is important. If, if the game's at a stalemate, what I'd like to do sometimes is just tell the team, chill for a little bit, play around this Rift Herald that's going to spawn. Once the Rift Herald spawns, then people are going to be forced to come from out of the tower, play around these little choke points here. And if, we get, if I go back a little bit, it might be a little bit easier. So, like, around these little choke points, when Rift, Rift Herald spawns, it's going to make it a lot easier. So, like, say here, and here, and here, or, you know, on the other side, whatever. Then... It's going to force them to come because I don't want to give up Rift Herald. And if we get Rift Herald, then it makes it so much easier for us to just Rift Mid or, you know, Rift a Tower to break it. So, again, these are all these little things. And the way I come up with them is just tying them straight back to my identity as Zoe. What do I want to do? How am I going to win this game as Zoe given these are my strengths and, you know, my boxing analogy or whatever. The way I'm playing Zoe. Okay, guys? So, thanks for watching. Hopefully, all this, like, makes sense. And for all of you guys who play Zoe, this really ups your game or, you know, adds a different perspective. Or for people who think you're picking up Zoe, you know, maybe this motivates you to potentially learn it. Um, if you have any more questions about the video, feel free to leave them below in the comments or in the in the Discord. Um, and I'll be keep pumping out more content, guys. And thanks for the support. And cheers. Thanks for watching.